Good afternoon, welcome to eRepair. Uh, so today I'm working on a HP Gen 8 micro server. Uh, this is my own private one. I run Plex on it, um, along with a number of other applications and things. Um, brilliant little server, does a really good job, low power on all the rest of it. <clears throat> I was asked by one of my viewers, basically how to go about um, upgrading the processor and what to use. Uh, I'll pop some comments down below on my recommendations in terms of processors, but um, it's really up to you guys. And uh, basically I said I'd run through how to strip it down, how to get the motherboard out, and what an actual replacement looked like. So without further ado, let's crack straight on and I'll show you how to get, get into this thing and uh, what to do. First thing we do is undo these two thumb screws at the back. Sometimes they're a little bit tight. Um, generally, they'll just come undone really easily. Then you pull the whole case that way and it will lift, sort of come off, and then you can lift it up just like that. Let's pop that to one side. So, I am going to be giving this a clean while I'm in here. You will see a few things that are non standard. This is a starting point. Um, so, basically, to tell you why this is here, I have my four bays on the front. Um, as you can see, it is a bit fluffy. Those are fully populated. I wanted a separate boot drive. Um, so what I've done is I've split one of the SATA powers off and I've connected a SATA cable. I only had an L-shaped one, as you'll see, which is a bit of a pain. Um, but there we go. And I've basically hidden that up there. So I've split um, power off from what was what should have been the CD drive and taken power up here and connected a SATA cable. So all, all really easy stuff. Um, we'll take this door off as well, so you just open it and lift it up and that will come off. And just as a, a top tip, if you ever need it, generally the Allen key's in the front to, to undo everything. So in terms of the actual strip down, we just need to disconnect power and SATA cables and then we can slide the board out. It's really, really easy. Um, so first cable we'll disconnect is this one. Just push the little clip in and pull it up. It should come out quite easily. You might need to give it a wiggle, just like that. And then we'll pop this cable up, which is our connection. And then we're also going to have to disconnect our hard drives. So we'll just pop this one up. Just push the little thumb thing and pull it up. And then finally, we've just got to disconnect this sensor as well. I if I can get that out nicely. I'm trying not to pull too hard on the cable because I don't want to break anything. There we go. So that's all disconnected on that side. Hopefully you can see that's all disconnected now. There's nothing attached to the board. So now pop this down and turn it around. So we can see this side. In theory, we don't have to take the RAM out. I do like to just so that I know it's not going to hit anything on the back. So I'm sure people have seen taking it around millions of times. Just pop them like that and then lift them out. And then here we've got another couple of cables we need to disconnect. So there's one and there's a blue one that I don't know how well you can see it right at the back here, which just pulls up just like that. And at that point, that's pretty much everything free. So obviously being fairly careful of cables, all you do is pull this down and it should release just like that and the whole tray should come out like so. And that's effectively our motherboard out. As you can see, the RAM probably would have cleared it. It's just one of those ones that you take the risk, really, and uh, I don't want to. In terms of uh, replacing the processor, I'm not going to go through the whole thing because I, I don't have replacement thermal placed uh, or anything to hand. Um, but essentially, two screws either side, um, just undo them. The whole pad or lift off and then you can just replace your CPU in the sort of normal way that you would. Um, I have got full fat windows on this as well uh, but you can and again just as a nice optional extra you could put a micro SD in and boot from that you could do it with a USB stick and boot from that there's, there's pretty much lots of options with this it's a great little server it is such a shame they don't produce the gen 8 ones anymore um, we are up to the gen 10s now which are in my opinion, not quite as compact and there's not as much you can do with them. 
um, but overall it works well. What I'm going to quickly do is off camera, I'm just going to give this a blast out now and just make sure that it's, it's clean and tidy before I reassemble it as I've got it apart I might as well. So I will grab the compressor and give it a blowout and then uh, I'll come back to you for reassembly. Right, so a few minutes on, oh, that's, us, that's clean now, uh, so I've given everything a really good blast out, and let's get this assembly done. So, reverse as bef reverser before, basically you just slide it in and get everything in place. The only thing that I will say is a bit fiddly is that when you come around to doing this side, this back cable that you possibly can see, possibly can't just here, is a little bit fiddly so what I tend to do is slide the board in a little bit and then pop that cable in and then finish sliding it in because it is a bit of a pain to get to. Let's make sure I've got it around the right way. Right there we go. So that's now in and then at this point, we should now be able to just pop everything in. Hopefully there's nothing in the way. I have actually got a cable, the cable going to the array is a little bit in the way. So that's done. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop our RAM back in. So it's one bim at a time. doesn't click then just maneuver everything into position. Okay that's one and then number two like that and we'll pop this cable back in back here as well. So that's that done and then turning it around to the other side see my drives are nice and clean now. Uh, the cable going to the array has already sort of got itself in position. Let's now push down the rest of the way and do our sensor cable next because that's a little bit more tricky to get to. Uh, SATA cable and then power like that. Um, so if you just in case you were interested and you want to modify this yourself what I've done there's a standard Molex just here which powers the CD drive um, I've put a, a male to female connection on there and gone straight into a SATA. Um, so this power lead, although it does work, I've effectively split it down there. Um, so you could technically still use it. And then I've hidden the SSD in the drive bay just so it's not in the way. So it's sort of tucked out of the way nicely. Um, it doesn't obst uh, in obstruct anything else. Um, and then obviously in terms of drives, there's my four bays. It's all lovely and clean. So that's 100% better. What we'll quickly do is we'll just pop this chassis back on. So let's grab my chassis in my front piece. And literally just round the right way. Drop it down to start with. And it should more or less line itself up. There we go. And slide it into position. See your thumb screws back up. Like so. And then the last thing to do is just to put our front back on, which does actually need a bit of a clean, so I might take that back off again in a minute. And effectively, that's it. Um, so, I mean, that whole process has taken less than 10 minutes, even if you did the, um, the processor, it's only going to take you another couple. It's really not a long job. It's very straightforward. So in essence, that's it. I've shown you very briefly how to do the processor, how to strip it down, how to get the board out. Um, I've had the chance to give it a clean myself, which is great because um, it definitely needed it. If you found it useful, drop me a like, leave me a comment, give me a shout out. If you've got questions, please ask them. I, I do try and reply to as much as I can. Um, hopefully you'll see from the comments that a lot of people have had replies. Um, if there's anything else you want to know as well, obviously, yeah, just ask. Um, otherwise, I shall see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.